What's going on, guys? Uh, hopefully everybody had a great holiday, a great Christmas, uh, happy Hanukkah, whatever it is you may celebrate. Um, I hope it was good, and I uh, hope you got to spend some time with friends and family. Um, it was all good here, and uh, then we got New Year's coming up. So uh, I talked a little bit about, I tweeted it last week, I don't remember if I did it on Sunday Scan or not, but basically uh, saying Lucci, who's an options trader, uh, one year I tweeted that he just hates you know New Year's resolutions, and I'm like, well, you know, some people need an excuse to, to make a change and whatnot, but... He was right in that, you know, you might as well just start that day, right? You're, you're, all you're doing is procrastinating that idea uh, to a later date, which is already the wrong kind of mentality for making those changes. So he had a great, uh, a great thing that he wrote, and, and it made me think about it. And, uh, you know, it just it, it goes to trading a lot, right? You know, why are you waiting until January to make those changes? Make them today, and you're going to be that much further along, that much closer to your goals come 2020 and then it should be at that point uh, familiar practice rather than you know this this new thing okay new year new me I'm gonna change this I'm gonna do that um, get get practicing earlier so you only got two days left now so you don't have uh, too much um, time but regardless you do have two more days uh, to, to get with the program um, I sent out everything uh, that uh, I promised for um, Shirts, books, uh, and all that good stuff. I apologize for the delay. I did add some extra things in there. Um, and uh, it was either uh, shave my face or ship those out. So uh, I got a haircut and I shipped those out. Didn't have time to shave my face. So um, look for those in the mail for those of you guys that I got uh, back to. And uh, we do have to pick somebody uh, this week by the end of this video. So uh, we will do that as well. Um, Last week I talked about focusing in on, or at least what's working for me is, is really focusing in on that one trade. Uh, sometimes I like to trade a lot of different names, not, not 20 different names, but uh, I like to trade three, four, five names at once at times where I start to scale in, you know, dabble a couple different names with uh, a thesis that I've kind of already had or, or been waiting for. And if the trade starts to work, then scale into that trade. If it doesn't, then that's okay. I'm, I'm in very small. So I had a couple of those this week, but uh, I really zoned in on pretty much one trade per day. Uh, we had RAD one of these day, one of the days. We had PT on Friday. Uh, we had FCEL on Friday. So I always try to focus in on the, the biggest volume, the biggest opportunity, uh, and... Uh, you know, that, that's where my focus goes. Uh, there's a lot of names that are making big moves, and if you look at the daily chart by the end of the day, it you know, looks like it would have been easy, but it's not. It's not when you know, it's chopping up and down all day, and there's low volume, and there's big spreads, and you know, even uh, some of these uh, biotech names like BBIO, and I think it was AG, uh, IGMS, and um, that one might be wrong, but, uh, and then PHAT, and even KOD. There was a few of those where, you know, you look at it on the daily and you're like, oh, that would have been, you know, kind of no-brainer fade. And then you look at it intraday and it's like two, four, two, three, two, and, and it's all over the place. So it's not uh, as easy as looking at the daily chart. So uh, for the most part, the point of mentioning that is I, I really try to focus on volume, liquidity, and where your edge is because you know, it's just one or two swipes away on some of these names once you start to scale in and then they end up rallying back. It's just, it's, it's a pain to trade. So, uh, my, again, my focus has been, you know, one or two main trades um, and, and then putting most of my efforts towards that and then, uh, you know, kind of just dabbling in along the way on some of the other names. Um, one big miss that I did have on, on Friday you know, I shorted it off the open parabolic. I also shorted it pre-market, and I covered it all. Um, that was a nice trade. I reshorted it and covered it because I was thinking in my head it's going to be like CLVS. And you know, don't don't use too much um, energy, uh, you know, and focus on this one name when you know it's going to be a lot easier just to wait for the backside. And so I was right like 97% of the day. And then in the last 10, 15 minutes, it starts to rally back. And I'm like, 
damn, I'm happy that I, I didn't try to fight it. I didn't try to size in because it was rallying right back into the 22s again. And then that's it. They pulled the goalie, unwound, nice $2 per share fade. And, uh, you know, I, I missed out on that, but uh, it, it would have been a fantastic trade. I was prepared for it. But at that point, it was Friday. It was a good day. I didn't want to chase down on the entry. Uh, you don't know if it's going to be just another, you know, flush and come back. So uh, I left it alone. Um, and that's fine. Uh, MIK was another one uh, on Friday, which was a fantastic squeezer. Uh, 40 or 45%, I want to say 40% uh, short float. Um, and a uh, nice squeezer throughout the day. Stapes had a wonderful alert in the room. And then it started to really get out of hand. And so, you know, it went from 650 to 680s to 7, 720s, came back, retested under 7. It started to really speed up towards 750s, 780s, 8s. And then that's when the Jets turned on, and it started to go 830, 850, 860, 880. And uh, there was a fresh, uh, not necessarily a downgrade, it was a, a reiteration of the same price target of seven. Um, and uh, they, they, it was an updated, um, updated uh, note based off of the, the day's news. Uh, and they basically were saying, you know, the, the target remains unchanged. And um, so I got short. And uh, yeah, it, it started to pull back, and, and so I was like, you know, again, it's, it's a good day, it's Friday, I don't need to be too aggressive. And I, I had an aggressive position, uh, so I went ahead and covered um, some of it, and then some more, and then all of it, and then it flushed out another 80 cents. So that was a little bit frustrating, but it also brings up a point that, you know, sometimes less is more in the sense, not necessarily trading less is more, but sometimes less size is more because I probably would have given it a, a better chance, but I had sized in, uh, I got a little aggressive, so I kind of second guessed myself uh, as far as whether or not it was going to unwind, and you know it did. It, it faded about a buck, buck ten. It would have been a monster trade, but I, I sized in too much in the 870s, 880s, and when it came down to 850, 860, and it was kind of bouncing around a little bit, I was like, eh. I should probably size down. And then once I start sizing down, I, I covered it all. Um, so let's get right into scan. I'm gonna try to keep this one a little bit uh, less than last time. I got, think I got up to like 50 minutes uh, last time, but that's because I threw in a recap in there. So I'll, I'll go over a few little things um, on, on this scan, but I'm gonna try to keep it, uh, keep it a little bit less time. Uh, so PT, uh, PT was great on uh, Friday. Uh, nice parabolic type actions, some great reads in the room, especially this uh, this rip right here. We always want to look left, right? And so the thing about PT is it was pretty much easy to borrow across the board, right? So anytime you get a, a stock like this that is easy to borrow for like everybody, um, it's no longer in the hands of just a, a few that decided to either pay for it or um, are, are Kind of, they, they know what they're doing, right? Anybody can short it. And so a lot of times people just have that thesis, it's up, so it must be a short, right? Uh, everybody's a perma uh, bear on everything, every momentum trade. If it's green, it's gonna be a short, etc. <coughs> so they get aggressive, they get too aggressive. And you know when you get a, uh, a flush out of the gate like this and then rally back, you might stop out a few people because there's a lot of emotions involved, there's a lot more uh, traders that typically, you know, aren't too familiar with uh, what is possible on these trades, and then they they end up getting too aggressive. You get stopped out right here. This was a huge volume bar. Uh, this was, uh, I think, one point yeah, one point two million shares uh, traded in this volume bar. But basically, stop somebody out over these two seventies and then slam right back down. And I said that in the room. I said I think that was just somebody totally bent up. Triggered a, triggered a cover, they got covered, somebody sold huge into them, and uh, I, I thought that it was gonna, at, at that point, fade the rest of the day. And so we did get that nice fade, but the problem is, and what I need to do better, uh, the same thing with uh, FCEL, you know, you can have great entries, but when you have a situation like this where a lot of people can do the same thing as you, uh, and, and it might be a crowd of trade, you're gonna have these these huge rally backs. and. You know, where I did cover, I did cover into the washouts and whatnot, but, you know, I should have been more aggressive into the flush uh, to cover more rather than kind of thinking, where can I add, where can I add? 
Um, you know, never read on the trade, but still, it was it was a, more of a, an aggressive uh, whipsaw type moves, which you know, had you missized, had you tried to, to scale in too much too soon, or scale into the winner uh, hard, you might have been uh, tested. You might have you might have had rules tested. You might have. Uh, been squirming on your seat and whatnot and that's exactly what you can kind of see with this price action and that's typically what happens on high volume easy to borrow names not necessarily low floats because this isn't really a, a super low float but um, just something where they know that they can kind of toy with uh, shorts a little bit and their goal is to keep it trading because as soon as it starts stops trading it's it's likely going to just kind of fade back to uh, you know where it, where it came from um, so I was thinking that, you know, potentially, if, if we had another hour, we'd probably get there, but I was thinking it might go to maybe 170s yeah, uh, on Friday, but higher the better. I figure it's going to gap down tomorrow, but higher the better, uh, and looking for failed fall through momentum and potentially uh, fade. This one's been on scan for a while for the breakout. Uh, it's been setting up. You could the, the first day that I had a buyer, and then again the other day it was starting to set up, and, you know, this 130 level was really a key level. Um, so we gapped over that and we had a big, big move um, pre-market, but again, uh, it's, it's going to probably find gravity at some point. So higher the better, uh, looking to, to join the trend uh, on the downturn come Tuesday or Thursday since we don't have market on Wednesday. If it is holding trend, you know, keep in mind, everybody, in, everybody could short. So we, we might have that secondary push, uh, and I'd love that. So see what happens there. Sava, S-A-V-A. This one, I, I really think that somebody is, is XXXXXL sized and trapped short uh, just by the way that it's trading. And you can see, I mean, VWAP, I mean, you can see just how great this, this uh, VWAP indicator is. Um, you know, huge squeeze right off uh, midday there. So you can see nice little uh, ABCD setup right here. Uh, consolidates again, ABC deer, breakout again, comes back, retest VWAP, starts, consolidate, you know, you've got the flush out, consolidate, higher uh, lows. This is into the close, but then uh, breaks that prior 520s and then onward and upward. So, you know, Friday after hours, yeah, it almost went up to six and, and I'm, I'm hopeful that it does pull back and give them the, the kind of the uh, confidence that it's going to pull back and then retrap again. That would be the goal. Uh, I could easily see this going seven to 10. I mean, I really could, um, but it just depends because as soon as the, the tide, you know, turns, then, you know, that's when the, the, the pullback's gonna happen, right? So if everybody's on the same page for seven to 10, then this thing's gonna sell hard and, you know, sell hard into the breakout and then fade off. So. You know, I have to be cautious, kind of see what happens. Hopefully it comes in, works people in, traps some more, and then starts to go. Um, but based on how it reacted, you can see over here it went up and they tried to hold it down, slammed, slammed. You know, it's very difficult to hold it past those those big slam moves if you're, uh, if you're long. And if you're a short trying to hold down, you know, this level here, 520s, and it seems like that that was really the, the key. You know, 520 here slams down, 520 peaks slams down, again slams down. Each time they're holding it lower and low, or excuse me, higher and higher. You, you know, you can see a, a higher low, you know, minus this, it, it ended up holding a, a higher low overall, again here, again here, and then, you know, onward and upward, and obviously after hours it went nuts. So, um, and I was thinking that into the close, mentioned in the room that, you know, this, kind of has that I have that spider sense on uh, that that this one could be a fun one so again I want to see it kind of pull back I want to see it traps more I want to kind of lose it off people's radars and then see if it swipes back uh, if everybody's buying it and going hard going heavy uh, for that breakout 7 to 10 then I'll be looking to fade it um, but definitely shorts are trapped uh, you know this day right over here um, was 35 million shares almost and they never really let shorts out after that. It was relatively small volume. And then we had this big, you know, two gap days. And then this was the day that it pretty much got everybody. You know, it, it, it had a huge move after hours, came in, had a big move during the day, came in, but still held most of the day. And then from that point forward, you can see, 
you know, they've been buying up the dips. We talk about this all the time on the daily charts, what I kind of look for. And, you know, obviously somebody's been uh, spending some time supporting it. So, see what happens. Uh, FCEL, this one's a monster. Uh, great uh, breakout trade. Cody's been, uh, Cody Oddstock Trader, uh, has had a great eye um, lately. He trades completely different than me, but uh, it's nice, you know, when he's, when he's firing on all cylinders to kind of pull up what he's watching. He took the gaffer. Um, you know, he, he took it long uh, this day, nice breakout, and then he held it over. So that was a beautiful 60% uh, move overnight alone, not, not to mention the, the prior day. Um, but, you know, at that same, same point, uh, a 60% move is, is pretty crazy. So uh, especially on a, a stock that has such a high flow, such so many shares out, doesn't mean that it can't keep on going higher, but it just doesn't make sense. Uh, that it would hold. So, you know, I dabbled in pre-market, just small 140s, and then I hit it uh, 159. I didn't get 160s. I went back and looked, but I scaled into it, scaled into it. And so this is again like PT where, you know, on a move like this, I got to get back into that mode when I'm sized to go ahead and trade around that core. Because, you know, I, I, it, again, it never went red on me. But the PL swing from this level to right over here was aggressive. And, and I feel like I could have locked in half, uh, you know, without really thinking about it and then rescale in and, and whatnot. We don't really think about it. And we don't, you know, this is hindsight. I should have, could have, would have type stuff. But uh, real, realistically, when, uh, when this flushed out that early in the morning, I, I probably should have uh, locked them in. So I, I want to better that. Uh, you know, and this is the same conversation that we talked about with CLVS, MYOV, um, maybe RAD, a few others, right? So, uh, same kind of situation, front side of the move, you know, don't be afraid, especially if you sized in to pay yourself along the way. But other than that, nice basketball analogy we talked about on Tandem Trader, flushed out. I pretty much was done uh, into this uh, move down here, 126 to 129. Um, higher the better. This is one of those kind of cult style, um, you know, stocks. So you know, good luck trying to get along out of the, out of their shares. They're going to be holding. Um, and I, I would imagine that the average short size is probably longer than the average long. I think it's spread out very far. So um, I would only be looking to trend join or trade parabolic moves like this on this stock. I don't want to get too aggressive. Uh, thinking that it has to pull back because it, I mean, it really doesn't. It, it's yes, it's a huge move, uh, but you know this whole thing has been setting up, and you know they they probably caught some good shorts. So again, I think that the emotional side will be on the short side, meaning you know we'll we'll have those big moves because shorts are covering. Um, so higher the better. Uh, reactive trades, big moves only, and that's it. M I K was fantastic. Uh, I, I, doubt, I, I talked about it a little bit uh, earlier, um, but great alert pre-market uh, by Stapes the, the, with their news. Uh, it came back and you know this, this again, it's a hindsight move. I didn't, I didn't take the trade, but um, you know you, you wanna look for this type of setup, right? So it fails at VWAP, comes back, uh, nice little uh, gearing up, comes back, consolidates, retest, retest, retest higher lows, and then goes. And so when you've got news, when you have a beat chart like that, it's no different than RAD, it's no different than any of these stocks that um, have been beat for so long that are just looking for that one reason to rebound. And it's not even necessarily that it's, it's a big game changer, it's just that one rally that causes some of the shorts to cover. It's like that first moment where it's like, oh yeah, you know, maybe I should cover some. And then that breakout buyers, momentum covering, all that kind of stuff starts to create uh, a really big uh, opportunity, especially after RAD. You know, everybody's looking for next type of, of uh, parabolic action. So nice, steady, steady, steady ripper. Uh, and then at this point, you can kind of see, and it, it, you have to pay attention to levels, um, especially like this. This is very easy to, to kind of identify. And, and yet we ignore it all the time. It's just like RAD, I posted RAD, I was a little, uh, the two days ago, I guess it was Thursday. This same kind of action, right? I had a great entry, uh, size into a winner, for example, and I'm ignoring the fact that this level is basing, right? So the big trade would be under this level. 
uh, if it's going to happen. Otherwise, later, parabolic type move. We tend to ignore this, but you should always focus looking left. It's not just for finding tops. Look left. Where did they soak it before? Where did they support it before? And, uh, you know, if you had paid attention, then breaks through the highs. And now you have what I call kind of like a premature end of day move, a premature uh, squeeze. So typically we see this happen a lot and they squeeze out and they squeeze everybody from the intraday move and then it comes back to where it originally started. So where it originally started the squeeze. And you can see this is, you know, I mean it came right back to that support level. So we saw this on RAD, we saw this on uh, maybe CLVS, but there was, there, I mean it, it happens, oh, uh, F, FSTV, FTSV rather. Um, See if I can go back that far. Whoop. Go. Um, actually, not that one. Right here. Same move. Same exact move as MIV. Uh, MIK, rather. So, you know, you've got that uh, intraday move. Now we're coming into 1, 2 p.m premature end of day move and you know it's always a fantastic unwind but it's just about not getting too heavy too soon being on the right wrong side of the trade otherwise you'll exhaust yourself out of the trade you'll miss it and you'll be upset uh ruhn i'm just watching it uh i noted this uh action um for two days uh i mentioned it on thursday and i mentioned it again on uh friday it doesn't mean it's a long but what's interesting to me is you know this action right here you can see the volume here uh this is very very interesting in the sense that uh it's 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 definitely not natural right and it's basically 20 20 uh 20 000, 15 000 or so uh per candle and you know they, they're kind of like working somebody in or trying to create some uh illusion of some sort or working in order who knows but what's interesting is day two what do you know we're back and you know this it's just totally random trading and then all of a sudden it's like 40k per candle like literally 40 30 38k per candle uh 40k 50k 38k 37k 60k 70k and then you know they pull it so again the the key is to not you know buy a breakout or anything but i'm taking notes right now right and i've seen this action before uh, on on prior breakouts uh and you know it always exhaust and pulls back but at some point if it starts to base at the seven and it starts to you know break through those eights we might have one of those crazy moves and this might be the setup for it so again i call it kind of taking notes because you know I, I'll, I'll remember that hey remember that time we saw all that crazy action well maybe they were setting up for this and so again i'm i'm watching it uh the last couple times it's broken out nicely but you it, it's an odd trader so you have to be careful with it but I definitely like how it's setting up. Uh, RAD, R-A-D. Um, I got short uh, pre-market in the room uh, and I covered down into these flushes, which was a perfect, uh, done with the trade, worked great. Uh, then I got short over here uh, and I added, I covered the flush and uh, I think actually down over here. Uh, and again, I've, I'm done, great. I'm going to leave it alone because this is going to be just like CLVS. And like I said, I, I mean, I, I was right for most of the day. And then here comes the last 15 minutes. Bam. Uh, so that was frustrating, but also at the same time, it, you know, 22 was that magnet level, the, the level where uh, all day it just kept on coming back to that 22 level. So I should have been paying a little bit better attention to this volume over here. Uh, and then when it starts to crack this, uh, this support line, uh, you know, it could have been a, a great chase, but I didn't want to, I w didn't want to do it on Friday. So what do I, what am I thinking about on Monday? Uh, higher, the better. I, I do think we might have a gap down. I, I would not underestimate how far this can flush out. This whole thing has been a squeeze and a half. So keep that in mind. Um, if we were to go back. You know, the first, really, the first line of uh, kind of support might be in the 18 range, 17, uh, 1770s to breakout level was about 1850. And, and I kind of mentioned that 
uh, on on Twitter, you know, 19, 1850s potential. So um, I would expect that it might have a little bit of a flush out, but I don't think it's just going to, you know, be done. I, I think a flush out would get bought back up and we see that steady, you know, grind back and uh, you either got the flush or you didn't. Uh, anything that we gap up on, I, which I'd love, uh, I'd be looking towards the 21 level. So ideally, in a perfect world, it opens 2020, 2050, uh, ramps up, and then I can use 21 as the guide for uh, risk. That would be great. Uh, I'm not, I'm not sold on that up potentially happening, but if it does, that's what I'd be prepared for. Uh, otherwise, I'd be wanting to see, you know, some type of pattern like this, where it ramps up, consolidates, and starts to gear up, ABCD type pattern on a, either a red to green or intraday. So we'll see what happens, but uh, ITRM, this one was a newsletter fueled move. Uh, all of this right here, this was all unnatural. Um, and then it ended up coming, uh, coming right back in. Started to consolidate. This is what I would consider probably a, a intraday squeeze. Basically everybody got short. Uh, they were they were comfortable with it. They were uh, convinced here. You know, it, it, it pulled back and all right, I'm on the right side. I did the right thing. Uh, you know, everything's great. And then all of a sudden it comes back up. So emotional squeeze. Seller came back in. Uh, I don't really care about it tomorrow. Uh, you know, ideally pops uh, versus five twenties and potential fade. But if it's hanging around Tuesday or Thursday then we might have a, a T plus two type of cover situation. So um, be cautious with it. It's, uh, it's known for coming right back in, but at the same time, that was some pretty good volume. Uh, so we'll see what happens there. Uh, MREO, uh, this was fantastic. I, uh, I traded it on Thursday. I got long uh, the 160 levels and I sold out in the 230s, 220s. Um, and then I did not lose focus. For the next day, I wanted it, you know, if it started to kind of grind and grind and start to go, uh, I wanted to be there. So I got uh, I got long, uh, and you know, ended up being a, a fantastic move. You know, it started to base and, and grind, and I traded my plan. Uh, but then a newsletter came in right over here, shoved it into a circuit. So uh, I just went ahead and sold basically 70 percent, 60 70 percent of it, uh, and then I had. Uh, at the last little bit, I um, I filled at the open of the of the halt, so I got out of that, which was great. Uh, it did squeeze back, uh, but I am keeping it on radar just because these are the types that you know people look at the the float, the share structure, and they get a little aggressive too soon, don't realize how thin it actually trades, and you know this thing has been a, a pretty thin uh, type of runner, so we have potential, not necessarily tomorrow, but I want to stay familiar with this, especially if the volume keeps up. Uh, and then add a couple days for you know potential borrows to get called in and whatnot. And uh, you know if we start to really roll uh, 370s, 380s, that's really a big key level. Uh, and then 420s, and then who knows? <clears throat> so be cautious. Uh, you you got to assume that's going to fail. Not really a, a reason to go. Uh, but at the same time, can't ignore the volume. And if shorts got too aggressive, then we'll have a play. PYX, a trade like this, I'm kind of thinking that it's a one day wonder. Uh, and basically what I mean by that is, let's see if I can find it. Something like, you know, it has a nice powerful day, next day it gaps up, sits back. Like this, powerful day, gaps up, sits back. Gap up, sit back. So that's what I'd be prepared for. Um, and, you know, ideally it, it opens up maybe uh, 830s, uh, ramps up a little bit, and then fades off the rest of the day. That's what I'd like to trade. Um, it's been uh, a while since it's ran, uh, so be aware if it starts to hold support, it could be like one of the other times that it's ran. You know, it, it does have that uh, run once in a while where they just kind of get shorts, squeeze them, and next. NLNK, uh, higher the better on this. I'd be looking, you know, two, 280s, 290s, um, probably 280s, morning ramp. And then look forward to flush potential gap fill on the daily back to 250s or so. Uh, CNST, just staying familiar, nothing I'm crazy excited about. Uh, but again, higher the better. This is a little bit of the chop that I've been talking about, so it's difficult to trade. But if it does 
gap up into the 4750 level uh, I'd probably fade that if it if it couldn't find a bid SPCE uh, we talked about the wicks quite often so if you look at this bottom this is 1057 this bottom 1059 this bottom 1062 so each time it goes up by a few cents so there is somebody supporting that every time it's about to crack somebody's there so these are the wicks that I talk about uh, and like I said last time we talked about it I'm expecting a, a potential move now I, I'm not convinced on the long yet but I would love to see this uh, really squeeze out and potentially take out the highs I think it's gonna unwind like crazy but I want to be familiar and I want to be uh, prepared for um, some type of uh, you know, 13 to 15 type move, and then potentially get that one to two dollar downside. That's what I want to be prepared for. Um, other than that, rapid fire, uh, just charts that I'm interested in, and this is the idea generation kind of stage where you know I've seen the chart. Now I want to see it, you know, confirm my thesis. So um, you know, ONTX weak opens potential breakout. Uh, you know, it's all it's setting up very nicely on the daily. So. You know, key levels is probably that 50 mark, and then maybe up to the prior high, which was 60, 5883. So let's call it 60. So 50 and 60 are the key levels. Watch dips the next couple days. CANF, I mentioned on Thursday. I like to have it on radar just in case. I don't. I don't care until Monday, Tuesday. I want to see 350s be like actually be holding, uh, and then 380s for is trigger. Uh, for a potential secondary move. We need a PR, we need volume. Um, and again, it's an idea. It's, you know, I could start into it, but it's not a, uh, it's not an aggressive, uh, bullish thought unless it starts ticking those boxes, right? And those boxes are 350 base, 380 confirmation, four breakout. ONCY, this one, I uh, did fade it. Uh, off the open on Friday, that was a scan idea. Uh, I kind of just joined this trend versus VWAP. I noted, uh, I noticed that it started to kind of base, so I went ahead and moved on. But it came back nicely. So this is how these crazy moves start, right? It's already had a crazy move, but it can have a, an, an additional crazy move. So watch this thing. Week opens. If it keeps getting bought up, and you start to see the wicks, like we talked about on SPCE, then prepare for you know PTI style you know breakouts. It, this is actually relatively low volume too. Uh, for this type of a move coming from 50 cents, you know, usually these might trade five, 10 million shares, but on a good day, this has been, you know, six million on one day. But most of the on, on a good day, it's it's one to two million max. Usually about uh, a million. MDR, I've missed this a bunch of times. Uh, really nice curl. Uh, I'm not sure that I'd get long at this point. Uh, maybe if it sets up, if it looks good, week open for breakout, but. Uh, otherwise, just uh, I'm looking higher the better, higher the better, and ideally it offers something like this where it gaps up and slams down. Uh, and then last but not least, CFRX posted this one in the room, about 55 cents or so. Same concept, bigger picture idea. Nice grind up, nice trend all, uh, all day, and uh, hopefully uh, we have uh, an opportunity there. So. That's, uh, that's my uh, scan for this week. Again, it's a short week. I want to be familiar with these names. Um, it doesn't mean I'm going to trade them all. Every morning, I focus in on one to two main names. And then otherwise, I'm focused, you know, maybe three to four or five max throughout the day. Uh, as far as, um, you know, 9.45, 10 a.m. plus trend joins. Other than that, it's scanners, focus, patient. Um, and again, like I said, you know, focus on that one big setup. And if it, if it works, it works. If not, then, you know, you, you've got a risk. You've got a, a plan. If it doesn't set up, you don't have a trade. Um, but if you start thinking about, you know, these A-plus setups, you're going to realize that it's that one trade per, you know, week, that one trade per day, that one trade per month. When they all line up, it's really going to help your, your year. So uh, this week's uh, winner is Birdie R. I will uh, text you right now uh, or reply on a comment um, on YouTube, and you can email us. Uh, like I said, I sent everything out this week finally. Uh, I think I have one more person to send stuff to. Um, but uh, Birdie R, uh, he mentioned uh, you know a lot of the 
a very valid point and one thing that I um, kind of look for and I set price alerts. So one of the features that we have in IU is uh, in the actual chat room itself, you can set price alerts real time and it will alert you when a particular stock hits a certain level. So uh, one of the things that uh, you know we tend to do is we focus on the, the names that have all the volume for that given day. Because obviously those are the ones you can size in, those are the ones that you can um, trade more aggressively. But sometimes after that consolidation comes the really nice uh, easier move. Not saying easy, but the easier move, right? So we're so focused on nailing it this day, but if you wait and let it consolidate and form its, you know, where it wants to, um, you know, base and top, and as it breaks through or breaks down, um, nobody's looking at it, and that's usually the best, uh, best opportunity, the best trade. So um, I, I would use the price alerts for that feature. Um, I've done that a lot, uh, and it kind of keeps things. Oh, that's right. I did want that if it broke this level. Uh, and, and it's a really good way to uh, stay informed when uh, certain price levels that you cared about uh, hit. And the funny part about that is they always hit when it's off your radar. So uh, you look at it you know, a couple days later and you're like, oh, that's the one that I wanted. Um, but uh, you know, that, that's how you kind of solve that issue. So uh, again, guys, thank you for the comments as always. We post a link in the bottom uh, or in the description, and it actually goes to a blog post and it has you know the the, the write out of what I'm looking for each thing. So if maybe you didn't understand something verbally, go ahead and look at the text. Uh, if you have further questions, you know the drill. Leave comments. We try to get back to uh, what we can, um, and then uh, obviously each day we've got Traders Lounge, uh, which is sort of the the mentoring aspect of Investors Underground um, and uh, obviously the Momentum Room. Uh, and then one other special uh, note is uh, for those of you guys that are interested in swing trading, uh, keep your eyes on, uh, on your mailbox this week, uh, on your email uh, and probably my Twitter, but uh, we're going to have a, a pretty uh, sweet deal. Uh, we talked to Michelle about, um, she runs the swing trade room in IU. IU members have access to that, but she also does a, a ledger and uh, she's been she's been killing it for many <laughs> the, the past many years, but uh, this past year is is a hundred percent her her kind of market. And um, so she's uh, she's great at what she uh, does and every morning we kind of share charts. And any time that we both have the same kind of thought midday or, or um, in the morning, whatever, you know, when it both hits our scanner, we're both about to tell each other the same thing. It's always a really nice trade. So um, again, this is her kind of market, especially January plays. She's going to have a big list of January plays and whatnot. So we'll send that out and uh, check it out and you guys might uh, really like it. So um, have a great week or good rest of the weekend and uh, we'll see you in the room tomorrow.